tuning in to the online broadcast network, After Buzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads from over 200 countries and your number one source in after show entertainment. <laughs> TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind the scenes exclusives. All thanks to E Entertainment's Maria Menounos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of The Ultimate Fighter, A Champion Will Be Crowned After Buzz. I'm here today with a special, special host, co-host. I'm Dari Baronado. This is George Hermosa. And this is Miss Alexis Torres. She is new. Oh, I thought Jay like got a haircut or something. Or well, you something. know. He yeah. would have had it got extensions. Oh. Yeah. That wouldn't have been a haircut from Jay's normal. Well, I mean, do. I always more thought like that you just, like, had more hair. Yeah. Yeah. Thought mm-hmm. I got a weave, you know? Mm. But. I thought you were going to say that you thought you were the special co host. But there's. Not that I think you're special. Duh. That goes without saying. I mean, I was so special at the call in last week. Oh, true. That's right. I you gave it. some great input last week on the call in. You think so? Yeah. How, what did Doodle think? Doodle thought it was awesome. I love Doodle. Wait, but, so who are you? Yeah, you don't know. I'm I'm Jay. We just talked about this oh. like two seconds ago. Good answer. It's <laughs> a good answer. No, I'm Alexis Torres. Um, I am a retired fire fighter. Um, I used to fight in amateur fights. Um, I did a lot of uh, Vegas and San Diego, and um, I've done Muay Thai since I was six, and I did. Uh, Tung Sudo, I have a black belt, and our whole family is all martial artists. So my father. So don't is, piss her off. Yeah. Seriously, so I'm just cool. Saying, my family will come after you. Like Jesus my dad's a boxer, Christ. my oh. grandfather is a Muay Thai boxer, oh my, my mom's God. a kickboxer, oh. and all three of the children are black belts. Jesus. Oh, wow. Yeah. I th- hold on, I think we have Jay Tan on the line. Jay Tan? Hey, what's up, everybody? What's up, what's up? You haven't met Alexis in person? Oh. Hi, Jay. Hey there, how you doing? I, I'm bummed we can't hang out to yeah. hang out live We're this broken. week, but we'll catch up next week. I Next week, so. for sure, you two will meet. Yay! All right, guys. Let's. I didn't even intro uh, the episode yet, Jay. So we're gonna dive into that, and then we'll get I some of your ask input. A question first here. Oh, okay. Um, what, I'm looking on the AfterBuzz TV uh, live feed here, and I'm seeing Studio A. Are you guys in Studio A? Because it doesn't look like we're in Studio it's A, still Jay. Got spotlight on. Are you? Yeah. Oh, now you're about to sit down. I just saw you come into view. Oh, what a nice top there. <laughs> okay, That's well, the live favorites. the live feed is definitely delayed, so no yeah, mind that. Apparently so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this week on The Ultimate Fighter, we saw a pretty good fight. It only went the two rounds, the two five-minute rounds. It was uh, Emily Kagan versus Joanne Calderwood. She's my homie. I know who your favorite was. I love JoJo. She's my favorite. Um... Joanne Calderwood won by majority decision. Decision. It was definitely not a decisive win. I thought it could have went both ways. I think it would. I think it should have gone. Even though I love JoJo, I think she should. It should have gone to the third round. I That's think so too. My, my yeah, opinion. I don't think it was decisive enough to have ended I mean, I th- there. I think the first one, the first round, could have gone either way. Mm-hmm. I think the second one was decisively for JoJo. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, I still gave her both rounds. I, I don't think it needed a third round. I did too. Really. JoJo was, uh, she was stalking Emily around the cage the first round. I, I, what George said essentially is correct, uh, in my opinion. The, the second round was definitely much more uh, JoJo. Uh, the first round closer, but I think uh, JoJo controlled more of the, the cage. Uh, it was a lot of, you know, clinch work back and forth, but what I saw, I felt like uh, JoJo landed more knees. Uh, it was more effective in the clinch. Even though she was up against the cage, uh, you know, for a certain amount of time, um, she just like, kind of controlled the octagon a lot more than. Uh, than I give did. I give JoJo both rounds for uh, control and cage dominance, but there was no real damage being done. I, you mentioned the knees; it was funny. We were watching it, saying, "Are those knees really doing anything?" She didn't have much leverage up against the cage. I think they were just knees to keep busy and to score some points, which yeah, of I course agree. did her well and it, and it helped her, but. I, yeah. I would have liked to have seen it on the third round. I would have liked to have seen it and uh, more decisively, maybe it, maybe a KO or a submission, but obviously we didn't see that. I read somewhere that uh, Joanne... What's that noise? 
Yeah. I read someone that JoJo was like, she was not impressed by her performance. She was very actually kind of disappointed. You would kind of think, coming from an undefeated record. Seriously, what is that noise? It's, that, right? it's the echoing. I think it's the echoing okay. from, yeah. probably um, from Jay. Yeah, so you, you can you, you would think that somebody who's undefeated, somebody who's got great Muay Thai and striking, that she probably would have should have knocked her out. But yeah, I agree. I, guess, I mean, it, it's always good whenever you have somebody win and not really impressed by her for performance because then you know that she's not just settling. She didn't just take the W and just, you know, settle. It's like, hey, I got the win, but yet I still need to do better. I Absolutely. need to close it out. I need to improve on something. So I, I like that from her. Yeah, that's why she's my favorite. I feel like she's very humble about everything. She's so and that precious. She yeah, is I mean, so precious. We, we were talking about <laughs> yeah, it, the yeah. fact that her, my favorite line out of the whole episode was the fact that she was like, I'm going to bake a cake and after I beat you. And I was like, oh, you're so adorable. <laughs> she's <you> so cute. <laughs> she, she totally plays that, that precious so, role. So soft spoke. She's like, oh, I want to go back to school with this. Title bill. Can we just go on? Yeah. Can we just go on a date? I want to take you on a date. Oh, did you just propose, Joanne Calderwood? If you're watching, George Hermosa wants to take you on a date. You ever in the Los Angeles <laughs> basin? Oh, ever, in the Van Nuys, oh. ever, in the Van Nuys, ever in the Van Nuys area? I know an amazing, amazing lady who sells corn uh, on the carts. <laughs> It's right next, right, right, right Hey, right I think I know block. this lady. You know what? She's a small town girl. I don't think she'd mind. I don't think she would mind. I don't think she'd mind at all. Oh, only if she's living in a little room. George, come on. Slur, John, or you can, uh, it's, it's, the, it's, a, it's the ultimate fighter. Uh, it's, it's a UFC fighter. You should at least go up for, like, you know, uh, Burger King or something. Yeah, Burger yeah, King's a good one. Ventura. She would probably be his, his sugar mama. She That's can maybe take him, like, wine and yeah. dine him. I'm just a little upset that nobody got, <laughs> yeah, that too. I'm a little upset that nobody got my uh, journey reference, but I guess that's just me. Oh, uh, no, it went right over wow. my head, George. You know what? I want to say, too, about this match here. Yeah, go ahead. I, uh, I don't know if anybody else caught it, but I, I have a note down here as quote of the week, but it's probably quote of the entire series. Uh, it's history. Did anybody else catch? So in in the third, the second, no, third round. Yes, I know. I know uh, what you're talking when, about. The second round, but when they were I'll, let to, you, I'll let you say it because I know exactly what you're going to say because we all said the same thing when we were watching it. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, no, it was, uh, I take it back. It was the the second round there when they're in that uh, reverse triangle, 69 position. Yes. Was it me or did Joe Melendez actually suggest Sit on that her we're going to catch an E for this one? Face. I believe my exact I believe my exact reaction to that phrase was giggity. <laughs> yes, it, it was his reaction. We were watching it and and you just saw Gilbert Melendez so so serious. I give him credit for being so composed while saying it. Mm -hmm. But he was like, sit on her face, sit on her face. And the entire round oh, was it sit on her face? Oh yeah, it was no, think, sit on I her think face. The, oh, the recap at the very end it sounded yeah, like see, I heard something different. Yeah. Oh, what did you hear? Like very close to sit and well, an I went H back in and between played it over and yeah. Over yeah. And I, yeah. I added the H in there. But if, if they would have said that instead of sit, uh, that would have been the line of the century because that is kind of uh, hilarious. That's what it sounded like at the very exactly end. my point. And you can hmm. get away with that. It's I don't know. Fox Sports 1 now. and, uh, you know, it's, it's late night. <laughs> I did not think things. I did not think that is what he was saying. I think it was sit. But, you know, the alternative is quite funny, so we wrong. could go that with that. Make more sense. <laughs> But it's, still, it's still kind of interesting to be honest with yeah, you. Yeah, either way, it was a very good uh, comment from. It still, it still made me give a yep. give a little chuckle. Gilbert Melendez. <laughs> no, but not to take yeah, anything away from these girls. Gilbert Melendez on this coach in there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what did you think about all the drama with the uh, oh, team God. Pettis uh, over coaching? So the girls were speaking. They were saying uh, he was being maybe too critical of their technique at this stage in the game where they kind of just need some drilling and some, you know, good hard work. They, they were really critiquing the women's technique. What did you think about this, Jay? Um, I thought this was kind of a, you know, this is the second episode of the season, really first one of, of the girls being in the house. No, I guess second one. But um, it is kind of an interesting uh, illustration of the potential problems between, uh, you know, female fighters and male coaches or, you know, difference between the sexes. I don't think that that's necessarily a common thing all throughout, but this is new uh, new territory that everyone's going into, an all-female team and male coaches. Now, I'm sure the women have male coaches at home, but, you know, a new thing I didn't for think these two I, coaches could be. I didn't think that was the problem, Jay. I thought the problem was that that – these girls are so much more experienced than anybody. I mean, all the other Ultimate Fighter seasons, we talked about this last week, they're coming into the house as, you know, 
new fighters looking for the opportunity of a lifetime, an opportunity to learn and prove themselves. These girls have already proved themselves. They've already been the I best. Just, They've already been champions. You, so I think their no, problem with the, the coaching. Level fighters. You know, go look at, at any ultimate fight. Anybody that's been an ultimate fighter uh, or that's been on the show has had several uh, pro fights, whether you're talking some guys have only had two in the past. Uh, some of these women have more than 20 matches. Right. But they are pro fighters. They have their own camps and teams at home. Um, I think, honestly, you know, whether it's, um, whether it's the, the gender thing or it's uh, just an experience thing, it is working out the kinks, you know, the, the, the produce. Presumably, that's like the first week or so that they've uh, that they were working together, and mm -hmm. so you know, I think it's working out the chemistry. What do you think, George? I agree. No, I, I think I think a little, a little bit was a little bit overwhelming. I think for the girls, um, maybe they're just not used to that kind of environment. Like I said, like you said, they're all fighters. They're all professional fighters. They all Invicta is a professional uh, league, professional company. Yeah. With professional fighters, so I, I think in some ways it was very. Uh, we kind of had our own thing. Now it's like almost as if the show had to change their way of training because it, at the end of the day, it's still a TV show. And so I kind of see where you both are coming from. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I just think that, you know, like uh, Emily Kagan's a perfect example. She trains at, you know, Winkle John's. These girls are already training with the top camps in the nation, in the mm -hmm. world. Mm -hmm. So coming onto a show and having Anthony Pettis, you know, maybe correcting her kicking technique. I think it was, they were getting a little too specific. And I think, you know, Felice Herrig and a couple of the other girls were getting offended, almost insulted by the over critique on their technical work. Because, I mean, any good coach, not saying they're all amazing coaches, but any good coach will tell you, I don't want to change what you do already. I want to take what you do and what you like to do and make it better. Well, that's you know, Pettis is uh, he's a, he's an active fighter himself. Mm -hmm. These guys are not necessarily lifelong. And Pettis, for example, will say you know he's not a lifelong coach. Duke right. Lucas is, however, um, so you know the, my argument will kind of fall somewhere in, in between the two. Right. Um, but it is if nothing else, you're talking about new fighters, new coach to each other, and. They've got to they've got to figure out that that happy medium of communication. I mean, there's other coaches that will look at somebody and say, uh, "We got to start all over from scratch with you," because their style of fighting or of you know coaching the fight is something different than whatever X Y Z fighter they're starting to work with. So right. I, I think that's an inevitable thing with anybody, you know, with any coach fighter pairing. And like I said, presumably this is early in the season, and they probably hadn't had a lot of experience uh, training with each other. Right. It's like that feeling, um, you probably know, Alexis, since you competed. Yeah. When you're getting ready for a fight, all you need from your from your training partners, from your coaches, from your teammates is confidence. Yeah. You want to feel confident going into the cage or the ring uh, right before your fight. So I think another thing is, you know, say you're say you're sparring a week or two out of, out from your fight mm -hmm. and someone's like, uh, you're really not turning your hips over on your kicks. It's like what? Oh my god! Yeah, like this is messes me up. It totally messes up your mental composure. Yeah. And I think that um, you know I have a fight coming up in three weeks, for example. So I'm in the perfect mindset uh, to feel this now. It's like if I were to go to training camp tomorrow and my coach would, you know, be like, "Darry, you're not turning your fist over. You're not doing this. You're not, mm. you know, break down all my technique I've been working on for the past year." I'd be like, "Oh my god, oh, I'm fighting three weeks. Why is all this coming up now?" You know what I mean? So yeah. I think I think Emily Kagan and um, specifically was stressed because, you know, she had a fight. Joanne Calderwood, the number two ranked fighter in the house in within days, and they were, you know, kind of re reforming her game. Yeah, I agree. So I think that could have been where some stress came from. That's a very fair point, too. This is an abbreviated training camp for all of these women. Mm -hmm. You know, you get six weeks together, and even if you lose, you're still, still training there. And, yeah, it's, you know, you, you can't change... Uh, you can't change things to a, to a huge extent in six weeks. That's right. a valid point as well. What What would you guys feel like being, you know, Tisha Torres or Emily Kagan that now have to stay in this house hmm. after losing? What um, do you guys think? I mean, 
in my brain, I always thought it was kind of strange because I was like, oh, you want to just hang around with all the, the people that could potentially continue. But I guess at the same time, I'm thinking of, you know, I do want to be able to still train and hang out with the friendships that I've already made. It's, right. It would kind of be more heartbreaking to just like up and leave because didn't they do that in the first season? They just kind of kicked everybody yeah. out. Yeah. So I don't know. At the same time, though, and this has happened in previous seasons, mm -hmm. you never know when somebody might get hurt. That's true. So, that's a very yeah. valid point. I think point. that's the number one that. reason, if anything, and I'm, I'm sure, hopefully, Jay will agree with me, is that you never know <laughs> when somebody might get hurt. So it's like you always want to be on your game. You always want to be continuously training. Yeah. Guess what? Somebody's hurt. Let me tell Ooh, you. Let me I would rather be that get that wild card phone call mm -hmm. yeah. from the Ultimate Fighter House than from my couch at home eating Krispy Kreme donuts. Oh, you know Krispy what I mean? Kreme. You leave the house, you, you binge on your life, on your amazing <laughs> snack foods and your bad foods, and then you get a call from Dana White. Hey, Daria, uh, Joanne Calderwater broke her knee. Can you come in and replace her? Uh, oh, yeah, let me just put down this donut and lose 30 pounds. You know what I mean? So yeah. I think it's good to keep them in the house, keep them in shape to some extent. And, you know, you, you know, get to cheer on that everybody, as too. as well as... Sorry, go ahead. No, it's okay. That was literally all I was going to say. I'll, I'll, I'll go. Sure. No, just, <laughs> go ahead, Jay. So <laughs> you're done. Um, I, you know, <laughs> on top of that, if you think about it, from week one to week 13, I think it's imperative that everybody stays in the house. Granted, you don't have a dog in the fight anymore if you lose. But from week one to week 13, if people leave after they lose, the house... And the, the, the gym itself are very different by week, um, you know, week 10, 11, 12, 13, because there's fewer people there. You right. don't have many options and right. to, you don't have as many people to train with. And so it becomes a different dynamic, which in some ways is unfair to the people that have lasted throughout that whole time. You know, when you're at the beginning, everybody has everybody to train with. But at the end, you've got the people that are advancing in the tournament that, you know, presumably are like the better fighters or having better performances during that, this whole camp. But now you're taking away their resources to train. So I completely it, agree. I think it's imperative that you keep people there. I completely agree. It's like you, you make it to the to the finals and you now have two training partners opposed to, you know, yeah. 13. It's absolutely and you're in the ridiculous. Along with the guy that, or the girl that you're going to fight yeah. on. So, <laughs> Could you imagine what, that? <laughs> Could you imagine that? This huge Ultimate Fighter house and it's only you and your opponent that are in the finale Christian left. And Bonner are there. Can you only imagine oh, what that must have been like? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. You want to play some checkers? <laughs> that is so awkward. That's a really good point. I, I, I want to go back and finish the first season of The Ultimate Fighter so I can look at that awkward moment. And thank God they changed it this season. Because with women? Yeah. I don't know how that would turn out with women. It's already catty enough right now. Yeah. With, uh, that's why I love this season. Women are just so much more interesting and emotional. We are. Yeah. I would agree with that. Yeah, yeah. I can agree I mean, with that. Yeah, interesting, to be sure. That, we are know. definitely interesting. How about uh, Heather Jo Clark seems to be the black sheep of the house so <sighs> far. Everyone's getting annoyed with her complaining and whining. She never responded to my tweet. I still want to know if she went to Los Angeles Valley College. That's all I want to know. That's all you want to know. That's all George wants to know. But she did retweet. Did she? Did she? We didn't. We, well, we didn't she... even get a retweet from oh. Felice. We had a retweet from Heather. That's way, true. We just got to follow up with it's, them. It's Felice's birthday today. Felice Happy Navidad. Birthday. Herrig. Huh? Did anyone get that? <laughs> I did. Okay. That was awesome. I got it. <laughs> it, just, it just wasn't funny. Ooh. Listen, George. Womp, womp, womp. You're now Jorge for the rest of the show. <laughs> Please don't call, just don't call me. Just don't call me Horge. Who you're, told you that? Now that you gave me all that ammo, <laughs> Horge, you are Horge for the rest of the show. Anyways, Daria, can yes. we wait for... Uh, I think probably for the rest of the season he is. Yeah, yeah. oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Now you're definitely Horge. Um, <laughs> Jay, sh sh should we make it a special announcement of who we are going to have on next week? No. Okay, fine. Whatever you want. <laughs> Horge jumped in the gun again. Um, <laughs> I'm just saying, what happens... Middle of the show, but... What yeah, hopefully... Um, oh, my word. What's that? I'm just saying, what happens if something happens, and then... She I don't pulls wanna, out? I just, I just don't All wanna, right, we'll keep the anticipation then. I'm not a fan Horge. of pulling out. I, I just want to see if... Whoa. Oh. Yeah, because you, you never know what can happen. Whoa. So I just figure, you know, I don't want to build everyone up and be like, oh, my God, I can't wait till next week, but hopefully... Well, it, right. you know, it's tentatively, uh, although actually... Uh, I, I spoke with her so directly, and she is confirmed, you know, unless something comes up. But we will have uh, Carla Esparza in the house next week, and also Jay Tan in the house <laughs> next week, back yeah. on Ultimate Fighter After Buzz yep. on the 25th. And 25th I will not be here, guys, because it's my birthday, and I will be in Las Vegas, if you want to know the goddamn truth. 
That's the truth. Happy birthday to not being there and missing <laughs> uh, missing getting to meet the number one seed in Ultimate Fighter Top 20. Hey, 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 Jay, screw you. Yeah. That was mean. Yeah, you know. That was is, mean. Is, is, is Carlos it wasn't my fault. It wasn't my fault. Uh, is is Carlos Sparza still considered the invicted champion? How, how does that work? Interim or something? Maybe maybe it'd be a good question to ask her, but like, is she, is she still considered the champion to that company? Do you no, know she's not. She's uh, she's no longer an Invicta champion. She has a uh, she has an Ultimate Fighter contract. Okay, so cool. I assume they're going to have a new championship, or they just completely got rid of that division. Oh, I'm sure that they will. Uh, I'm sure they'll have a title match. I'm sure they're figuring it out. We only, we only took eight title. of their top fighters. We didn't mm -hmm. take all of them. <laughs> 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 that's crazy to think about that. I mean, that's probably part of the reason why UFC Fight Pass worked out a deal with Invicta to stream their fights live because they took eight of their 115, their top 115 pounders. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think there probably was some some connection with those two deals. Definitely. Um, but you know that happens when uh, when a champion leaves one company, they are no longer champion. They didn't lose the title, right? But they're no longer champion. You talk about you know that was the case with uh, Boss Rutten when mm -hmm. he left, um, and then uh, Randy Couture as well. At one point was uh, you know was champion, and he left over contract dispute. More recently, though, you got Eddie Alvarez, who was champion uh, elsewhere, and now he's a UFC fighter. Yeah, Gilbert Melendez. Um, Chris Yagos, who just mm -hmm. got signed to the UFC. There you go. Yeah, Hector, exactly. Lomb Hector Lombard. Uh, I mm -hmm. mean, the list goes on and on. Mm -hmm. Jake Shields. It's yeah. fair. The, I mean, they were still a champ of that organization at yeah. one time, uh, so. I, I, know, I, just, I, I just thought because if they had, like, since they kind of have this uh, relationship, I don't know if kind of. Oh, if it carried over yeah, or whatever. Uh, yeah. I was just kind of curious. It was a good question. Yeah. yeah. Um, so next week they announced it's going to be Jessica Penne versus Lisa Ellis. What do you guys think of mm -hmm. that? I don't know. I mean, it's a rematch, by the way, yeah, guys. Because that they're they're not their previous fight, but the the fight that they had before was really just bloody like bloodbath. Yeah, I heard. I mean, I I think it was on the first Invicta show ever. Yeah, it was on yeah. Invicta so I wanna, one. I want to go back and watch that fight if it's as bloody as it's Jessica sounded. Penne won. By the way, guys. It was a very, you know very what? bloody I just, fight. I actually watched it probably about a half an hour ago. No, um, Because I didn't. I don't, I, I'm not sure if I saw it initially uh, with the first airing, but uh, I, I was very curious about the rematch. And it's funny because that was a very close fight. And at the end of Ultimate Fight, this week's uh, episode, Dana talks about that he hadn't seen the fight, but he heard that Jessica kicks Lisa's ass pretty badly. Yeah. I gotta tell you, everybody should really go and get a subscription of Fight Pass to, to study these, these older matches. It wasn't necessarily the ass kicking that you'd make it out to be. There no. really was an ugly, bloody uh, situation yeah. in the last round, but it's it's a competitive match, and um I don't know. It, it's the, the blood thing. It, it kind of tripped me out. I didn't expect this uh, this thought from myself. But man, when you've got a really bad, bad, bloody match in women's MMA, <laughs> dude, there's kind of a creep show factor to it that you don't have in men's MMA. You know, with men. And granted, this is just a, probably an, an example of um, the difference in like you know people's impressions about the gender the gender inequality in in society but when you see two guys beating the shit out of each other in a cage and it's bloody you're like yeah man that was dope bra oh, cool you know my hand is on you know but when you see two women in a cage and they're fighting and and one of them is bloodied up ooh man it uh, I, I started feeling guilty about myself that's funny just for being a guy jay i think as as a male you might have a biased opinion because i watched it as a female and yeah. i was like Hell yeah. Yeah, yeah! Punch her in the freaking face! Like I loved every minute of it, and I, I really wasn't turned off by the blood. Um, there's been some guy fights I've watched where I'm like, ew, 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 too bloody, too bloody. Um, <laughs> not to say that I do that more on guy fights than I do on girl fights. It's just I think I take it on a fight to fight basis, whereas men yeah. generally don't like to see women bloody, which is definitely a good thing for society. So <laughs> even in this episode, they had the where Rose was rolling around with Heather Joe, Heather Joe, and I guess she kind of hit uh, her head on something, and she kind of started bleeding a little bit, and it was kind of like, yep. I mean, I, I'm not uncomfortable with it, but it was just kind of like, oh, well, you don't really, you're not really used to seeing ble uh, women bleed. So even though it was a little trickle, so it was kind of like You should like stop by my different. gym sometime on a Friday. <laughs> I was Major. like, you should come by our house on Thanksgiving yeah. and get bloody pretty badly. <laughs> yeah, that too, that too. She knows how it is. You're... you're Philippine? Yeah, half, uh, half Filipino, half black. 
But my whole family, we've all Italian. fought in Thailand and in the Philippines as well. Oh so, what, did, yeah. what did you say that you call your family? The, the Terror Torreses. Terror Torreses. Yeah, that is awesome. Because we were the kids that got kicked out of fights or, or tournaments because we were too rough. Oh, or we were awesome. using too much or something like that. So we didn't, We had, sometimes we had to forfeit or we just had to. I leave. should get you to help me with my Muay Thai technique. I, I, I had a fight in three weeks. Love to. That would be awesome. <laughs> we got to stop by the gym. I'm so excited. Look at this, George, uh, Jay. Do you hear this? This is so cute. I know. You got new playmates at gym time. I have a new playmate. She's going to beat me up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Um, all right. What else? Let's talk about predictions for next week. I'm having a hard time with. Oh, I and like now, this. I forgot about this. You're after Buzz Ooh. TV. Whoa. Wait, can we get the the bracket up? Or? Oh yeah. I don't know if he has the George. Did you uh, Jay? Did you send it via email to somebody? Yeah, yeah. I sent it to uh, shoot. I sent it to everybody but Nick. Is Nick producing today? I think. Yeah. <laughs> I sent it to uh, Philip and, and Stephen and Okay, well uh, we'll see if we can find it, it If not, more there. we can mime it or something yes. We'll make it work But So we have Jessica Penny, Lisa Ellis Once again, we said it's a rematch Do you guys have any predictions? What do you think is going to happen? I'm just going to go with Jessica yeah, Penny. Yeah, me too Safe bet yeah. 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 I don't know what it is And I shouldn't just based on look But she just look She, she just looks look mean. scary Yeah, yeah I She agree. does look a little mean yeah. She was. I think she was the first one That had a problem with the coaching On Team Pettis Did she? I think she was the first one to say something she was, seemed Jessica little... was a little bit overwhelmed in that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah um, right. Although I think here's a funny thing. So we've got this rematch, which I think is going to be closer than a lot of people uh, than, than what they made it out to be. You know, because of the blood thing. Mm -hmm. um, I thought it was pretty competitive. You know, it was one-one going into the third round. Yeah. Um, and you've got Jessica. What I think we've already seen with these two matches here, mm -hmm. two that have uh, happened: Tisha versus Randa and uh, Joanne versus Emily. You've got huge disparities in the seeding there, right? You got three going against fourteen, and there's an upset. I you guarantee you're going to say the same thing 15. I said in the trailer. Go ahead. What, what's that? I, I feel like you're going to say what I what I said earlier before we started. But go ahead. I want to hear you out. Well, again, Joanne versus Emily was two versus fifteen, and it was it was a majority decision. Right. So between Jessica and Lisa, you know, four versus thirteen, Jessica is ranked number four. Mm -hmm. What what I think we learned here is that again, especially watching that the first Jessica Penne versus Lisa Ellis fight, you realize that the disparity is a lot closer than what what the numbers would dictate or what you they would have you believe they are. So right. I think it can be a, a close fight unless somebody gets the advantage uh, right away and the other person's having a bad day. Um, that's probably why there's a lot of uh, uh, a lot of talk about these matches this season being really good. Because 2 and 15 or 4 and 13 is less than what it would be, you know, the heavyweight season or, uh, right. you know, if you're talking about 170 or something like that. Or even look, even look at the 135 girls already in the UFC. I mean, if you took number one, which is Ronda Rousey, and put her against number 15 in the division, which I don't know who it is off the top of my head, but, uh, mm -hmm. you know, whoever, there would be a, a decisive gap. And I think that's what people are used to seeing in women's MMA because the biggest platform right now is the UFC's 135-pound division. So they're used to seeing that huge gap in talent, like Ronda Rousey completely mm -hmm. terrorizing and dominating all the girls beneath her, uh, regardless of seating numbers. And I think here we thought maybe it would be similar, but these girls are so much closer in level. Uh, but yeah. it's funny because Dana White did say there's a Ronda Rousey of the season, and I'm thinking this is going to play into it, the fact that there's a decisive... Uh, you may, maybe a split in athletic, athleticism or just a bigger gap between whoever the Ronda Rousey of the season is and the other, other girls that we haven't seen yet. So, Well said, Doc. Yeah, we still don't know what that criteria is for who's the next Ronda Rousey. What did he mean by that? Right, right. Is, is, we'll is she out. the armbar yeah. queen? Watch The Ultimate Fighter to find out. <laughs> next week. <laughs> or maybe the following week. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't know. When will we find out? When w it's so funny because the episodes are an hour long, but there's like not enough time to see everything. Yeah, I agree. I remember watching um, the Ultimate Fighter season one, and I would see like hours of house drama, and then like a lot of time of them training in the gym. I don't know why this. Do you know why Jay is the format different? Is that what I'm thinking, or why do I not see a lot of the, the house drama? Well, I, I think with this episode, I feel like we started to see some of the house drama. I think they play itself. They, they've got to kind of 
uh, sparse it out throughout the season. Number one, especially because the pioneering seasons of Ultimate Fighter were so crazy, people didn't know what was going to happen in their future. At that time, if you lost, dude, you had no shot of going to the UFC and right. you know, your career was over, you're never going to fight again. That's not the case these days. People know right. that they will get a shot, and especially that... I think we talked about this previously, that this is a very important season for women's MMA, mm-hmm. and I think most most or all of those women realize it. And, you know, you, you, we've gotten to a point where the UFC, you you either show up and take yourself seriously as a professional fighter and you do what you got to do to succeed, right. uh, or you're not going to last. So I think there's probably less drama to have, less drama for the producers to work with. Um but then also, you know, I feel like we saw a few seeds here, like uh, the like the Heather Clark stuff that you were talking right. about. People are kind of getting a little bit seeds annoyed with is her. the perfect but word it, because I think like they're planting right now for the real drama to unfold <laughs> later. So I, th- I think I think you're yeah. right; it's going to come. But right now, it's a little slow in the house. I'm like, yeah. all right, get to the fight already. This is boring. Yeah, I usually just want to fast forward through everything. I mean, especially when um, who who's the one that has a crush on Felice Herrig? Yeah, Felice Herrig. it is. Yeah, that was like, was that really important? On Sergio Pettis, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, and like, and they were asking her, they're like, "Do you have a crush?" She, she doesn't have a crush on him. She doesn't. I don't think she really cares. I think she. They were just like playing up that factor yeah. of her, her making him a friendship bracelet. See, that's what's fun. That that moment, like, I love that moment because that was us guys getting a little peek, justifiably, into like the girls, uh, the girls' gab session stuff, you know. Oh. And um, and that's what, I, frankly, that's part of what I loved about Fight Girls when she was on that uh, that show as well. Um, but you know it's a weird season when you've got Felice trying to play nice and calling for team meetings and trying to be the happy one that's you know friendly to everybody. Friendship bracelets for all. Right. Uh, I think Felice Herrig is misinterpreted. I think we've said this a bunch of times, but I think because I think she's actually a peacekeeper. I think she's the type of girl that wants to get along with everybody. But once that switch flips, hell will break loose. Yeah. So I, I think when we see that on the Good season, point. that's when you know all the bad stuff will go down. I'm very but excited I think, to see her. Right? What, so excited. So your favorite on the season is, is I got well JoJo, uh-huh. um, Felice, and uh, you said Rose Namajunas. Yeah, and Rose. Yeah. She's cool. She's everybody, yeah. everybody likes Rose for some reason. You just can't not I don't like know. her. There's something about her. I'm just like I just like you. She's got like that that rough exterior, like a hard upbringing, but then you know beautiful exterior yeah. and. Yeah, I think she's just a, a likable person. Yeah, she's very I real. I predict that we are going to see fireworks blow off between Rose and Heather. Oh hell I think that's to the crazy. yes! Really? Yes. Yeah. The, the feud of the of the season. I this think is why gonna, I'm going to confirm that, and I I think this is why Heather Joe Clark is like Miss like I don't know. I feel like she 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 might look for the issues, whereas like Rose is just like really, really straightforward, get to the point, cut the bullshit, cut the drama. I don't feel like dealing with you bitches. Like, I feel like she's a real, maybe like a, a girl's guy, like likes yeah. to hang out with the guys, yeah. doesn't like do the that. drama. And I think she just has a very small uh, tolerance or patience for mm-hmm. maybe girls like Heather. So I think I could see that. Yeah. Exploding. I mean, you you were even bashing on Heather earlier I wasn't today, bashing on her. Oh, Heather annoys me. Oh. <laughs> It's such a great impression. I really, really hope she never comes on the show. Well, now she's not going to come on the show. No, I, I, I respect Heather Joe Clark, and I think she's a good fighter. But I do think she can be a little high maintenance at times. Yes. I might have to jump on that oh. bandwagon. Because yeah. when I watch her, I'm like, okay, you scare me. But at the same time, I'm like, gosh, you're really just... You're hitting that thin ice for me. Yeah, like you know? nitpicky. Yeah. Everybody's you know? high maintenance to some extent. In her defense, she got her blender. <laughs> so things will probably be smoother from here on out. Because yeah. she got her blender, that's mm-hmm. true. Oh my god, I was just like, I wonder if it was like up. one of those neutral bullets or if it was just a standard blender. I bet you it was just standard, bl- standard blender. Yeah, you think so? Yeah. All that fuss for yeah, just a blender. Yeah, just a regular blender. Just a blender. You know what's funny? I, I love this season so much and I love the personalities that I get a little upset at times that they are 115 because so many of these girls would match up so much, so good with some of the 135 girls. Like what? Can, can you imagine like a build up for like a Rousey versus a Felice or even Ooh, a. Ooh, that would be kind of awesome. Or even like a. <laughs> Just a little bit. Just even, a little bit. Or even like a Carla Sparza against like a Maisha Tate. 
Oh my God. He oh. says Maisha every time. It's Misha. Oh, yeah. I'm like, isn't it Misha? Misha, I am sorry. See, my no, co host like... mispronounces your name every time. <laughs> I'm like, I'm guessing myself now. Oh, hey, yo, Horge, you can't be hating, though, on those Rin Nakai videos. <laughs> Misha Tate facing, facing Rin Nakai this, uh, this weekend in Japan. Awesome. Yeah, did anybody else check those out online? Uh, yes, yes, yes. I, I, did, I did see them. Uh, Jay's referring to this weekend's Fight Pass uh, Friday. It's actually like Friday a.m. going like, into Saturday. Like, it's like the prelims are like at 9.30 p.m. Friday night. Uh -huh. And then the actual show starts at midnight. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so it's actually... Oh, dude, that's awesome. That's how it is on the East Coast. When I watch UFC... Jay, don't you remember? What's that? No, is it? Yeah, on the East Coast well, when I used to watch... It's being broadcast live in Japan. So what is that? The 17-hour difference between Pretty much. here and there? Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't know. You lived in China, Something didn't like you? that. Somewhere between 12 and 17, I think. Pretty much. Um, okay. But, yeah. Rin Nakai, I want to see more of her. I don't even know what to make. If, if anybody hasn't doesn't know what we're talking about and hasn't seen those videos, just go on YouTube and uh, and search for Rin Nakai UFC or Rin Nakai yeah. uh, Shuto. Was she Shuto or Pancrase? Pancrase. 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 And, Something. Uh, or, or there was an excellent article written by... Uh, uh, Mark uh, Mark Rinaldi, I think, on uh, mm -hmm. uh, Fox Sports, which had a playlist of all of those 48 bizarre, <laughs> bizarre, crazy, very, like, I don't even know what to... Very bizarre. Some, somebody said that they were borderline fetish, which I suppose maybe could be, but they were so... I don't know, interesting in, in that bizarre way. It's, what's uh, what's it, also it's, interesting is that she's making her UFC debut against veteran Misha Tate. Mm -hmm. Well, she's a veteran as well. You know, she, 15, she is, what, yeah. 15, oh, and two or something like that. Yeah, she's no slouch. No, and, and this is yeah. the first women's UFC fight in Japan. Did you know that, Jay? Uh, I did know that. Yes. <laughs> Damn it. Pretty impressive, but you know, with, with women's MMA, but women's combat sports in Japan has a much longer legacy. Uh, and far more established right. than in the, in the U.S. And maybe it's because of a certain, how do you say, almost an acceptance for a strange fetishism about women fighting in Japan. That's just like, you know, not a theory, that's just one possibility. Or maybe it's just that they're okay, I mean, in general, they're okay with women fighting in Japan. Go and check out women's pro wrestling from the 1990s. Yeah, well, I think oh, it's good. Yeah. chicks throw down, you know, and Smack Girl and Deep and Pancreas. So There's been women's fighting in Japan for a, a very long time. Well, think about the, the martial arts that have been in Japan long, long, long mm -hmm. before they've been in the U.S., I mean, yeah, just yeah. martial arts in general, not even not even MMA or, or Muay Thai or anything like that, but like old school karate and stuff like that that originated in those countries that mm -hmm. didn't come to the U.S. until much later. Yes, yeah, yeah, there's that as well. But uh, combat sports has had a great, uh, in, in Japan at least, has um, they've been pioneers when it comes to women. Right. I'm excited. Uh, this weekend, this Friday, it's uh, Mark Hunt versus Roy Nelson. Big country. Oh, yeah. Big boys. Who do you have, Jorge? That's going to be a fun slobber knocker there. Who do you have? Who do you have? <laughs> nice words. <laughs> oh, man. Can, can, any, can everyone else go first? Because I've been, I've okay. been back Alexis, and forth with No, this. you can't ask right. me because I don't know. I will go. I'm going to go for Mark Hunt. I'm gonna say it's gonna be like a like a like a brawling overhand right. In you cannot. You, you won't. You won't knock out Roy Nelson. No, I don't Roy think so Nelson either. Roy Nelson has a J JDS. Junior DeSantis can't even knock out Roy yeah, Nelson. Yeah, Roy Nelson does have a nice chin. Yeah. Um, <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm still going to go with it, though, because I, I got to go with my word. I, I got to go with my instinct. I want Mark Hunt to win because I love Mark Hunt. But you don't think he will? I think he will. Oh. Because Mark Hunt's got a chin as well. Yeah, he does. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm probably gonna go with Nelson on this one. Yeah, yeah. He's what do you think, boy. Jay? I think it's quite obvious that Roy Nelson is gonna take down Mark Hunt, he probably in a, a, a belly to back suplex, um, possibly choke him out with a guillotine, or uh, or roll him and get a uh, uh, get a knee bar. I think that's it's pretty blatant that that's how the match is gonna go. So Alexis, oh, wow, that's like, so that Alexis, is so No shots, not even. How do you I would love that? to see that. Frankly. No fight is blatant. I have never heard those words used to describe a prediction for a fight. It is blatant that that's exactly how it's going to happen. If it does, 
Just, hey, Jay Tan, if it does, I, I'm going to place my bets through you ne the following yeah, week. But every single time. <laughs> um, you know what? I, I, Roy has said that he wants to keep it standing and, and knock out Mark. So hopefully we'll get those uh, those fireworks of the big big boys. To that end, I can see Mark uh, landing well on Roy um, and, and, and possibly tagging him and dropping him. Um, but at the same time, I, I think that... Uh, um, yeah, I, I wouldn't. That's a weird thing to think of, that I want to see it on the ground. I want to see Roy like implement all of his, uh, all of his his, his arsenal and, and I abilities. I do not want to see. On the ground. I'm telling you right now, I do not want to see these two big boys on the ground. No, because it's going to be a slug. Once one gets on top, the, I can tell you right now, the other one's not getting up. We, I've seen. An arm choke, side choke. Uh, yeah, side choke. Uh, uh, Roy Nelson on Hunt. That's what's gonna happen. Uh, who, uh, I can I can make this decisive prediction. Whoever gets whoever to the ground. So if Roy takes down Mark and lands on top, yeah. Mark will be it's on the bottom for yeah. the remainder of the fight. Is it supposed to be a five round fight? Yeah, it should be five. That's a really good point because it's not being broadcast uh, in the U.S. Uh, wasn't it? Uh, I think it's advertised on their. Uh, and their, their stuff is five rounds. Well, I, think, take a look I, here. I always thought all their main events and even the non-title ones are supposed to be five rounds. Oh, really? Because hmm. even the, well, the televised ones, yeah, but this was before it existed. Uh, um, this was before uh, Fight Pass existed. Yeah. You have your you have your computer in front of you, I'm sure, Jay. Google that for us. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm checking it out right now. I'm really uh -huh. curious about it. Already ahead. But... We'll wait. But in the meantime, <laughs> we'll wait. Who's, your, who's your favorite fighter, Alexis? Oh, you can't make ever, me do that. Ever, 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 ever. I can't pick. We That's asked my mom really when she was hard. half asleep on the phone last week on the show. What'd she say? She, well, she paused. She's like, uh, and I think uh, she, like, uh, asked uh, my Ronda, little sister. Ronda Rousey. Ronda Rousey. Yeah, Ronda. And she called I do, I Jay. Love Ronda, she called though. me the next day, and she goes, Daria, I don't even... Ronda's not even my favorite. I like the cowboy. What's the cowboy's name? And I'm like, Donald <laughs> Cerrone? She's like, oh, my God, I wish I would have said that. So, guys, to clarify, oh, doodle. my mother, Doodle, her favorite fighter is Donald Cerrone. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to go with Rhonda on that one. Rhonda, yeah. Rhonda's your favorite, favorite fighter. fighter? Yeah. Who's your second favorite fighter? Um, oh man, I forgot his name already. Uh, if you don't say something Japanese, I'm not gonna take you seriously for the rest of the season. Really? Why? Come on, say come on and trust me here. Why does she have to say something Japanese? That hurts. Oh, because uh, she's uh, Filipino and uh, trained in what, trained in Thailand, trained in Philippines. <laughs> Come on, it's name of good stuff. She's looking at you right now like you have twenty heads. <laughs> that, no, the no, that's my guess. Oh wow! Just say it. Sakuruba? Did I say oh, that correctly? No. Oh, is that terrible? I don't even say that right. Sakuraba? Yeah, there you go. Th that's her second favorite fighter. <laughs> She's going, yeah, well, I'll just go with that, sure. No, she's not playing into that. What's your real second favorite No, like, fighter? I really don't have one. Like, you don't have one? Yeah, just Ronda? Just, yeah, I mean, Ronda's just because of the fact that, um, I mean, technically not growing up, I mean, it was hard for me to find a female fighter that I could slowly see, like, myself being. I okay. don't know why, because, I mean, I've always liked Ronda, just the way that her fighting style is. It reminds me a lot of my grandfather's, which is creepy to put two and two together. But... Every time I watch her fight, I always see either myself being in that position or um, or her, the way that um, she predicts her moves. I've always, as soon as I said that, I'm like, she should do that. And then she does it. So I don't know why. My connection okay. with her is more internal than... Hmm. That's what, a good... What do you think of Gina Carano? Oh, uh, I do like Gina. Sorry. I don't know if you thought that face was like, Ugh. No, no, I, no. Like, I like Gina. Um, I personally, I haven't seen, I haven't watched most of her fights, oh. to be honest. And not because, like, oh, I don't like her. It's just right, because right. I just. Go back and watch some of Gina Carano's yeah, fights. Yeah, I want to. What do you think of Cyborg? I don't know who that is, actually. Oh, Chris Cyborg. She is the, the only person that ever beat Gina Carano. She's the one really? who made Gina Carano retire, uh, and then she was busted for doing steroids. I didn't know, I didn't know that person's name. I knew about the story about that, but mm -hmm. I didn't know her name. Yep, so, that's Chris Cyborg. She's probably. Probably Former like, strike force champion. Yeah, one of the top wow. ten contenders She's been going in the world back right and now. Forth with Rousey, like, oh well, I'm one forty five. Rousey's one thirty five. Well, you need to be at my weight. No, you need to be at my weight. It's like, well, if you want to fight Rousey, she's the champ. You need to go down to her weight. Yeah, that, if, if you want to fight her, you know. So. I, I look at it the exact same way, George. It's like I'm the champion. If you want to freaking fight me, you you drop down the weight. Yeah. Why should I go gain weight and get fat to fight yeah, you? At, but I think, I think she's got a fight schedule at one thirty five at the end of the year. She does. That's her right? goal is to prove. Yeah. 
listen, all those 145ers from Invicta, I personally know uh, India Gomes dropped down to 135 her last fight. They're all coming down. And it's for the one sole purpose. Uh, well, two, probably two reasons. One, to get in the UFC because there's no 145 division yet. Okay. And two, to fight Ronda Rousey to fight the best of the best. It makes sense. It makes sense. Um, and then Gina Carano, if she makes a comeback, her comeback will be at 135 as well when she's used to fighting at 145. Gonna Is she going to make a comeback? She's been trying to. She she was never really good at making weight. I mean, she made weight, but barely. No, she, I, there were so many times she didn't make weight. At one forty-five. Yeah, at one forty-five, and she's now dropping to one thirty-five. So I, I did hear she's walking around a lot smaller than she used to, but uh, we'll see. We'll see if she goes back to her old ways or if she, you know, can make weight at one thirty-five. Should be interesting. It should be interesting. That'd be cool in the future if it was like Rousey and Carano, was like the UF the, the tough coaches. <laughs> My life face. would be complete. <laughs> I've been, so you say you, you follow Ronda Rousey, you see yeah. yourself in her. Yeah. Gina's mine for that. No, and that's awesome. I've I followed her since since I first started training, whatever, four and a half years ago. And I've, I've she, she was like kind of my guidance in women's mm -hmm. MMA. She's the first woman I ever saw that could really kick ass and still have, you know, this persona and be, uh, Jay doesn't think she has a persona, but huh. she has this mm. feminine persona and she could still be pretty and yeah. walk the walk and talk the talk and fight the fight. See, so. that's how I feel about Rhonda. Like, yeah, yeah, Rhonda does it well, as, yeah. certainly as well. And she's, you know, kind of taken over what Gina started, in yeah. my opinion. See, as of right now, our house is all about boxing. So, and, you know, Filipinos and Pacquiao is like a big deal. Right. Now, Would so. your house think of Mayweather? We don't talk about that. You don't name. talk about that. We don't bring up that Who's name in this house. Who's that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That house is not allowed in our in like no. We don't ever talk about that. Like it no? hurts my stomach even just thinking about it because my dad would be like, "Get out." That's hilarious. Oh my god. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, even though my dad will probably never be able to watch this movie. I mean, this video. But I think Mayweather isn't a really good fighter. I just don't like his personality and how kind of like. A cocky cocky. You know what's funny? Yeah. I was talking. I know this isn't about Joe. Yeah. Uh, you know what's funny? Right? I was talking about this the other day with somebody. I was like, I think he's probably the best thing that happened to the sport in the last ten years. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I uh, think he's really great. Uh, my boxing coach has met Flo. You know, claims he has met Flo Mayweather and hung out with him and said that he, every single piece of cocky bullshit you see on TV is just that. It's Ugh, bullshit. I can't. He, he said he just plays the play. He exactly. Just, he, he knows what he's like doing. Just like everybody else, like Felice Harry, people say she's crazy and she's. So I still overly sexual. It's a, it's a, and, but it's the same thing. <laughs> same thing I thought about Chael Sonnen. Yeah. I was like, oh my god, he, this guy is psycho. Such a He's jerk. crazy. But then uh, down the road, I'm like, man, this guy's a genius. Yeah, they're just marketing themselves. Yeah. That's what it comes down to at the end of the day. Again, genius. I just I wouldn't want to hang out with them. Right. I think I would end up actually probably breaking my hand trying to punch him in the face. <laughs> like, I don't know. I just I can't. Like the, that documentary that came out yeah. about him. I just like wanted to just. Table flip. It was the worst. Oh. I couldn't do it. Like Jersey Housewife style. Yeah. Yeah. Like, is that what you're referring to? Like, yeah. It was the worst. They call that the Italian table flip. That's that's what it was. Except it would have <clears> been <throat> the Filipino flip. So, so, so <laughs> who's your prediction for who's going to become uh, who's going to win the the whole the thing? Ultimate the fighter? whole kit and caboodle. Season really? Twenty. I kind of really want JoJo to do it. Yeah. I really kind of want her to win it. I know that All a lot. Right. Of, I know when I was talking to it with a couple of our friends and stuff, they don't think that she can make it just because of. Even though her Muay Thai skills are, are up there, I feel like she's not really listening to her coaches. Because even though all the stuff that um, that he taught her, he did, she didn't really use it in the fight. She kind of just went with it. I don't know. I think I would like to see her win. That's interesting. Yeah. I, th I think that JoJo is one of those people that do she's, she does not look like she has the killer instinct, but I think she has exactly that. I think yeah. she has a killer instinct. I think she does, but she doesn't let herself. Other people see that. Right. That way they're not really prepared for it, which mm -hmm. is brilliant, to be honest with you. It is brilliant. I, I agree. So cute. Yeah, because like, in the interview, she seems so like you know adorable and stuff, but then right. when I saw her getting ready, I was like, oh, I wouldn't want to. Oh, I want to mess with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she turns. she's one of those people just turns on a light switch and it all goes out. Yeah. Uh, got Jay, you didn't see our little producer waving the five-minute flag, so so we're actually wrapping up here. We have four minutes left. <laughs> I, well, I want to give Jay a proper... I want to give a shout out to, yeah. uh, to Felice Harry to, uh, starting off that whole tennis panties sign. Uh, I want to see more panties going up <laughs> as the season goes on. I think on the uh, uh, team, team tennis sign in the, in the locker room there. That was awesome. 
I it was pointless. I don't, I don't understand, understand that either. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't even like. God bless me for like setting it off there. <laughs> oh my Lanta. Okay, Jay. Rachel was kind of digitized out. Like what? she had them kind of like hanging on and hanging off, and then. Uh, but she still got digital down there. Where can we find She's you on Twitter? Digital <laughs> down there. Should be on a shirt, Jay. <laughs> I'm all over the social media. J ten seven one six. As usual. Enjoy your vacation, Jay. We'll see you next week. Bye. Take, no, you won't see him guys. next week. Oh, I yeah, won't. Yeah, you won't be here. I won't be here, but I'll see you the following week. Yeah, we'll be hanging out with Carla Esparza Spar- Spar- there. Oh, yeah, shut up. Bye. Can we, can we hang up on Jay? <laughs> Love you, Flick. Jay. George, where can we find you on social media? I got three minutes left. I'm going to wait. You're so annoying. Alexis Torres, <laughs> where can we find you on you social media? You can literally find me on any social media. It's A Torres 890 Hold on, on everything. A Torres A Torres. 890 on Instagram, Twitter, Instagram, Twitter. Tumblr, it's all, all your social oh, media. They're playing the music. You can find me at Twitter <laughs> so at G Hermosa. You can follow follow me on Instagram. Double tap on my pictures so I can get one more like for every single picture. It shows a heart when you do it. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm on Facebook with uh, G Hermosa. You can see me uh, tag. Daria and Jay and all our AfterBuzz posts. Still doesn't say my name uh, right. You can wa- Daria. <laughs> you can watch me on the League uh, AfterBuzz After Show. You can watch me this Sunday at the UFC AfterBuzz After Show. Um, we'll be covering the fight night on Fight Fight Pass. Where else can you find me? Oh my God. Um, In the trash can outside, where I'm gonna dump him. <laughs> where else can you find me? Uh, <laughs> uh, damn it, I'm out. <laughs> You okay. Can find, you can find Get me. The you can find me at Daria's <laughs> fight. Apparently, it's October 11, right? Yeah, October Somewhere 11th in at, California at the, at the Maverick I'm Stadium be in Aldento, California. You can come watch me fight, guys. I'll be there in spirit. You can be there in spirit. <laughs> that is fine. Uh, also, I won't be here next week because it's Thank my God. it's my 21st birthday, bitches. So I'll be in Vegas. Um, also, you can see me this Sunday. Along with George Aramosa and Jay Tan. Jay Tan's uh, not gonna be here. Oh, he's not gonna be here this Sunday no, either. No. Oh, okay. It's gonna be. Well, a, uh, this <laughs> Sunday's gonna be awesome. I just it's have just a me and George <laughs> sitting in the studio talking about UFC, uh, the fight pass fights, Mark Hunt versus Roy Nelson. So come check us out there. See you guys later. Bye. 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 From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. Views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.